from Atlanta, somewhere near William Street. This is the Adult Swim Podcast. Today, April 16th, 2020, Thursday. I'm Matt Harrigan. With me today, Maxime Simonet. Welcome, Max. I hope everyone's drinking enough water. Why are you saying it with that weird delivery? Uh, I don't delivery? know. That's just the thing I was thinking about this morning. Do you morning. care if anyone's drinking water? I do. Water is one of the best things to be drinking. They always say this. Yeah. You drink a lot of water? Yeah, but it's water normally mixed with uh, flavored syrup and uh, uh, coloring dye yeah. and uh, uh, carbonation. Soda. It's called soda. On this week's Adult Swim podcast, J.J. Villard creator of J.J. Villard's Fairy Tales. Do you know a lot about him? I remember King Star King back in the day, but I didn't know this whole backstory of his earlier jobs and stuff. A fascinating listen, Matt. This whole podcast, what a fascinating listen, and full of loud advice for young animators and creatives. Yeah. Very loud advice. We recorded this in the uh, Adult Swim offices in Burbank right before all this corona stuff started again, and he was screaming wildly throughout this thing. If you want loud advice on how to scale the crumbling ruins of Hollywood, <laughs> this is your podcast. This Stay episode. tuned. Uh, dipping in right quick to the podcast mailbag. Greetings. This is from Brian V. I'm a fan of the podcast and listen while I'm at work at night. As a request, I'd like to learn more about the streams. I first started watching in the summer of 2018. In the fall, I started up as a chatter, and it's become part of my daily routine. I'd like to hear more about how they came to be. Maybe a look behind each how and who created them. Any sh stories how they were created? Particularly, I'd like to learn more about Stupid Morning Bullshit, William Street Swap Shop, and Fish Center. Thank you, Brian. Eric S. writes, Hey, just wanted to say that I've been really enjoying the Max segments on the podcast. His commentary and analysis of the episode have been really interesting. It's kind of cool hearing from a third party, kind of like in those peanut galleries in Japanese talk shows. I hope in the future he gets to do an interview. <laughs> Unlikely. Well, the great thing is today's interview is actually with me doing an impression of J.J. Villard. Alessandra L. writes, Please add me to the Adult Swim Weekly podcast. Alessandra, consider yourself added. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm just the messenger. Here's some updates from the Turner Slack channel. Oh. Uh, my bedroom smells like ham. Here's another one. I haven't told a partner I loved them since 2018. I woke up at 4 a.m. today and had chest hurt, then wiggled around in bed for four hours imagining if I died. Then I went to the post office and Quiznos. <laughs> These are good ones, right? Send uh, your requests for the Adult Swim podcast, comments, concerns, criticisms. I'm open to criticism. We both are. I'm Adult not. Swim pod well, you will be after you've been on the podcast for a while. Adult Swim podcast at gmail.com. On the network, Beef House and Three Busy Debras continues Sundays at midnight. Man, did you see that recent clip with Ron Oster going to get something from the fridge? If you haven't been watching the show, they at least got this clip on YouTube. His butt is so small. <laughs> He has a small butt? Yeah. He's got a very hmm. small butt. Uh, link that hmm. in the description, this clip with him with a very small butt. All right. Today, we're going to hear from J.J. Villard, creator of J.J. Villard's Fairy Tales, premiering Sunday, May 10th at 1215 a.m. We don't know much about him. Oh, I, we do now. I think he often wears masks, right? Well, when he came in for this interview, he was wearing a hoodie and sunglasses, and his hoodie, the hood was pulled up and pulled tight. Very um, isolating. Nice guy, very friendly guy. I, I, I didn't know him too well. I feel like I know him now. Here we go. Let's hear from J.J. Villard. When did you start noticing that you were a good artist? Well, I was like, as a kid, I, I always uh, saw other kids draw, and I would say to myself, wow, that drawing sucks. So I wouldn't <laughs> show my drawing till. I was like, it was really nice and polished. Uh -huh. And I tried to show it off because I was like, no one cares about your efforts, only the results. Wow. And that's what I did. I drew like the uh, Last Supper when I was in second grade. Yeah. And I made sure I drew so much detail that other kids thought I was a genius. But it wasn't the case. It was just like I, I would spend a, a week drawing it. And then I come in and I pretend I draw all quick. Where are you from? I was born in England. And then oh, I'm shit. from Southern California. Oh, Everybody right thinks I'm Mexican. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because like I ate so much Taco Bell, it's changed uh -huh. my physical appearance. Yeah. And 
now I look Mexican. So you were an artist. You went to Cal Arts. Yeah, I went to Cal Arts, and I learned things there, like amateur shit, to get me ready for the industry. Which was like, here's one: never reply when you're angry. Right. That's a good one. That's what I learned over there. Then I also learned never make a promise when you're happy. That's a good one. And then the last one I learned was never make a decision when you're sad. Wow. So three emotions. Those were those uh-huh. are three things that I took, and it, and it really helped me in the industry. Wow. No shit. So that's what you learned at Cal Arts, not what you'd expect. <laughs> Well, they also teach you, uh, it's really up to you. I mean, you can be a fuck off, do all the drugs you want, yeah. and um, party and shit like that. Yeah. But uh, uh, Or you can just like, you can focus and be a, a badass. So out of 45 kids yeah. that graduate every year. 45 kids? Around that. I thought it was much a much bigger program. No, 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 in character animation. Uh-huh, okay. No, the whole program Still. was like. There's over a thousand kids that graduate a year from All college. Right. So you went there for character animation. I went there for character animation. The That's same. so specific. How the do you end up going there for that? Because there's character animation and experimental animation. Uh-huh. And I was like, uh, I want to be like the head of Disney, ex-head of Disney, um, <laughs> who I love. <laughs> My mentor. Yeah. Do you know who he is? The creator of Pixar. Oh, John Lasseter. He created Pixar, yeah. became head of Disney. He went to school there. Uh-huh. And um, yeah. And so like, I don't know, ton, Tim Burton went to school there. Tons of people went yeah. to school there. So I was like, fuck, I just want to hang and bang with the best. So uh, I went to school there and I realized, you know, I fucked off for the first half of every year. And then the second half, I would focus like T-1000, Terminator. I would get a film done every year. And then... Um, Second year, I noticed out of 45 kids in every class, only four to five were getting work. And this was in 2004, right? What were the other the ones The ratio doing? was so low for, for employment. Uh-huh. And it, it was shitty. They, they became, they, they work as, you know, like Subway or fucking Jersey Mike's or Quiznos or some <laughs> shit like that. But a lot of kids weren't getting class. So I, I, I started getting scared in the sophomore year yeah. that I might not find work. And I started telling kids, dude, like right as they're getting the peak, like the first time they ever smoked a joint, I'd look in the eye and be like, you're not going to get a job when you leave this place, pussy. You ain't going to work. You're going to be a piece of shit. And then he'd be like, what? And then they started complaining to the teachers that I was telling all the kids that none of them were going to get work. Wow. And I had to get taken to, uh, not HR, but the equivalent of whatever that is yeah. at Cal Arts. And I had a Dean? I was told to stop telling kids that they're not going to find work. And Why guess who found a job? You. Got DreamWorks right out of college. Right out of college. Three months. That was luck, though, man. I mean, honestly, it was like such luck. I just had, there's like instincts. Like, you know when Gollum is looking for the ring? No, I don't watch that show. So Gollum is this guy. He's in Star Wars. Yeah. And he looks for a ring. Right. And um, when he sees it, he's like, oh, <laughs> Fuck yeah! Right? Yeah. And then, so I would get these like Jerk little off motions. I would for get the listener. I'd I'd get these uh, vibes. Yeah. Like, oh shit! There's a speaker. He's from Pixar. I'd go up and talk to him and be like, "Did we get along? Did we not get along?" I ask for his information. I judge like uh, uh, shit on that to see if he can get me work. But sure enough, some guy from. Uh, DreamWorks came, gave a talk. We kept in contact for two years, and then he got me a job on Shrek 3. Wow, no shit. So you get a job on Shrek 3 right out of college. Yeah. And Cal Arts is, I have to assume, not an inexpensive institution. Yeah. So you could be throwing away a lot of money if Fuck you don't yeah. get hired. Yeah. But if you do get hired, you make a lot of money. That's true. Right out, right out of college. Right. Probably make a lot of money working on Shrek Shrek 3, I made mean, uh, right off the bat. This is the thing I don't think people do enough uh-huh. in animation. Yeah. They don't tell, they don't talk about money enough. Let's hear it. So right off the bat, right out of school, yep. I was making $79,000, which is really good yep. for a first year. I was 24 years old yep. making, making that amount of money. 79, what year was this? This was 2005. 2005, so so that's big money for a guy right out of college. Kind of. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I was happy. I had Doing a, a job you love. Dude, yeah. And, you know, it was just like, dude, I believed 
I believed in the hustle to get that fucking job, mm-hmm. you know, when 90% of my classmates were believing in the luck. Don't believe in the luck, kids. Believe in the hustle. What was what hustle did you do? I was fuck. I was what I was telling you. I was like fuck, looking at all the speakers that were coming into class. I was reading them. Oh, I was like meeting all these. So you're talking about hustle during school? During school. Oh, okay. A lot of people S- think that that they should that school is the hustle. No, no. Fuck that. Right? No, 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 no. The, I th- the, I think that. So, dude, yeah. the hustle begins in school. What you do in school, to a large extent, determines like how you're gonna be. Most of the classmates in in school that I knew yeah. that were pieces of shit are pieces of shit to, to this day. Yeah, and uh, dude, why were they pieces of shit? I mean, they they just weren't they weren't living up to their potential. Really talented artists weren't doing everything they could do to make themselves shine. And here's another thing: I wasn't even like the best animator by any stretch. Mm-hmm. I was like in the seventy five percentile, right? I mean, there are kids there that study Matt, uh, Glenn Keane who did Tarzan. For your, you non history animator dudes, Glenn Keane is like one of the greatest animators. He just did that Kobe Bryant short that won the Oscar. Did oh, you yeah. watch that? Yeah, it's not bad. So then, um, uh, and and you know they really wanted to flex their animation. Kids, kids fell in different categories. You didn't have to know exactly what you wanted to do in college, but you just had to have a simple, a little bit of an idea. And um, and so what I did though was. I started putting my shit in film festivals because no one else was doing it. And you know that little fucking... Those, During school, you're doing this. Yeah. Uh-huh. You, you know those little lace... You know when you go, Boston Film Festival. Yeah. Burbank Film Festival. What are those things called? Uh, like the uh, the Leafs... The Leafs. Circle. Those, those two little Leafs things? <laughs> yeah. Dude, when you put that... Make those up. <laughs> ...on your resume... Yeah. Like, it could say something like... Laurel. A uh, Laurel. When you go Bakersfield Film Festival, people uh-huh. are like, oh my God, you were in the Bakersfield <laughs> Film Festival? You're like, yeah. A bunch of f- yeah. fucking inbred people watched my film. They don't give a shit. People didn't under- like. They- to this day, they still think it's prestigious, but it's not. It's like a game. It's like a trick. But It's a racket. It's a racket. And I accidentally got, because I was applying to all of them because it's free submissions when you're in, uh, a student. Oh. I, I, I got into Cannes Film Festival. So they make money for people who aren't students. Right. You got in a can. I got in a can. Well, holy shit. How I does, know. What so, happens when you, how does that happen? You're sitting around. Well, dude, it was just like. And you it, get a phone call? Dude, you're sitting in your dormitory room and you're like, what am I going to do with this film? I just made it. I just spent six months of my life making yeah. this fucking film. Yeah. What am I going to do with it? It's just sitting here in a tank. I, I, you know. How long is the film that you made? Well, the one that got the most attention was called Son of Satan, and that was 12 minutes. 12 minutes, and that probably took a long time to make? Yeah, six months. A fully animated? Fully animated. Six months, Yeah, pencil. Minutes. You're in your cubicle. You're like, yeah. you can feel life on your back just like fucking growing. Is that part of your education, doing that, or is that... Like in your free time, that is, uh, it's all education. So, Son of Satan, you yeah. put that in the festival. Yeah, and it was at that place at that time. I was just like, dude, I live at work, which was at my cubicle, mm-hmm. and I visit home sometime. You didn't care. I didn't really go home that often during that during that period. It was just like people uh-huh. thought I was rowdy, but they didn't realize like I'm rowdy, but I focus. Yeah, just got to mix the both. Party so, hard. how do you find out that you get into can? So it was just that. I submitted the person at can actually hit me up. Here's a side story. And like, have, has this film been in any other film festivals? I'm like, you know what it has? It was in the, it was in the Oxnard film festival. You know where Oxnard is? Uh, California somewhere. It, yeah. It's like yeah. this tiny little shithole. Uh-huh. She's like, Oh fuck. I have to go talk to the judges. So she went and talked to the judges and she got back to me. She's like, okay, we'll let you pass, but we want all our films to premiere wow. here at can. That could have fucked you. That could have fucked me. The though. Oxnard film festival. Oxnard film festival. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> That would have been a dagger in your heart. <laughs> that would have been fucked up, dude. But it did. It, it fucking uh, it got in. And then that's when um, uh, fucking uh, DreamWorks well, discovered me even a, a little bit more. Besides, does, that, yeah. does that mean people shouldn't apply to those small ones and they should no, wait they, to hear they, from the big ones? I, I'm telling you, apply to them all. Uh-huh. Because I was just, just tossing them out. I didn't think... I, can, to me, look like Simi Valley Film Festival. Like uh-huh. they, they all looked the same. It was just I was uh-huh. just putting them all out. And uh, had laurels next to it, you click on the box. Exactly. <laughs> so do you go to the film festival? So I, that one, um, here's another trick. I can teach you fucking young students out yeah. there. Um, never explain your art. Explanation kills art. Do anything. You just make it bullshit. Make fun of it. But don't ever really explain what it really means. 
And also, something else I can explain, uh, teach these kids to cheat these film festivals out of, because film festivals don't make you shit. They don't make you any money unless you like win one, which is cool. You'll win like 10K, but you can't survive off of it. And that's why I hate fucking people in the film festival circuit that think they're the rebels of the industry. They're not the rebels, dude. The true rebels are the fucking guys going out and trying to get the real shit. The real TV shows, the real movies, and all that stuff. Yeah. Like the film festival circuit's cool. You get to see some new stuff and 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 be like, oh wow, that's really nice art. But like, um, but but ways to cheat the film festival circuit is you, you let's say in Germany, I was I was invited to the Berlin Film Festival, right? And they're like, hey, you got in. I was like, oh thanks. And you know, I always wanted to go to Germany. So they're like, I'm like, okay, um, are you guys flying me out or anything? They're like, no. You go, oh fuck, dude. Then you write back to me. You go like, hey, how about this? I'll do a full two-hour presentation on my film, on animation, on art, and all that shit. If you fly me out there and set me up, and they're like, oh, let me ask. And you know, half the time they'll say yes. So I got to travel the world right in on. college and get that done before uh, real shit, uh, you know, real life happened. And then you felt like this is going to be my career. Yeah, yeah, I knew that in high school. You went to Cannes. You yeah. go to the festival? Yeah. It sounds something that's glamorous and sort of exotic. Is it that? Yeah. You know what kind of sucks and I don't understand? Like prestigious film festivals, they'll yeah. have you talk before your film airs. Uh-huh. And I don't get what that, why they do that. Like wh why would you talk before your film? Like, hi, yeah. my name's Matthew Hagaridge. Mm -hmm. How do you pronounce your last name? Harrigan. Harrigan. Yeah. Like, this is my film. Like, I put so much, like, what are you going to say? I put so much work into this. I hope you enjoyed the what story did you say? in the end. I was like, why am I talking right now before my film? If you guys watch my film and then ask me questions about it, I think that'll work uh -huh. out better. So the French didn't like me for that. They yeah. didn't like one of their own. Uh -huh. And I'm Jean-Jacques. They thought I was Mexican. I'm, I'm Jean-Jacques. Jean-Jacques. So how did it do? Did okay. Didn't win. Didn't win. No, I was nominated for a Student Academy Award, and it didn't win for that either. Uh -huh. But nonetheless, it was like, cool. I got to Do you remember who you lost to? No, I don't. Some son of a gun. So you go to Cannes. You don't win, but you went to Cannes. Yeah, but they, I think that's what sealed the deal with uh, DreamWorks. So how does the DreamWorks job come along? So then, like, they they see Son of Satan, and they're like, yo, this, this film's too fucked up. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, okay. Did you think they were going to make Son of Satan like the movie? <sighs> no, 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 I just, I, I just thought, like... How does it, it work? I don't know. Well, here's the thing, like... Um, so they said they watched Son of Satan. I was like, okay. They're like, mm, it's really dark. This is what you want to do. So I, I just right there. One thing about me is in these executive meetings, I really listen. Like it's cool. Like I'm, I'm JJ, the dude that has like a reputation of being like a bit of a rebel with some shit. But I'm a great listener. And when executives give me notes yeah i fucking listen like a motherfucker so when they say hey why'd you right away they don't they don't love santa satan so i'm like okay eliminate eliminate what doesn't help me right that's like a thing it's just like okay it's process elimination uh -huh. they didn't like santa satan so what do they want they want more kid shit so i just i trashed for my senior film i just did a fucking film that i knew wasn't 100 percent me but would help me huh. find, get that job and it did it was more of like a kid so film. you did you went against maybe your own creed and said Fuck it. I'm going to do what I think that they want. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. I got wow. the job. And then. It seems I, like the opposite of what I would have thought you would have said. I know. I said, I'd fuck it. I, I, I want to do Son of Satan. I know. Take it or know. leave it. I know. You see, but I saw what that attitude got you in the film festival circuit, uh -huh. which is like hoping that you win the film festival. Because I won uh, Ottawa Film Festival three years in a row, and I got $10,000 each time. And I was like, great, I got $10,000. How long am I going to be able to survive on this? Yeah. So I was like, fuck that. You got to sell. You got to go commercial. Yeah. So DreamWorks, and you, what happened then? You pitch them something. Yeah. So um, they, they said you got to take a test. So I, I had to do a, they gave me a, uh, like three script pages of mm -hmm. Pinocchio and Gingerbread, yeah. Gingy, and from Shrek, and I had to put them in a vulnerable situation. I went a little too far, what? but I, I, didn't, I didn't do too bad. Give me that again. Pinocchio. Pinocchio and, and Gingy, Gingerbread. Right, uh -huh. you got to put them in a vulnerable situation. They just say put them in a vulnerable situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you got to board it. So you have to. Wow. So you have to do the process of what like a professional storyboard artist would do, which is like writing that little write a little short outline. Uh -huh. um, they gave you a number of panels that you were allowed to do. I think it was like two fifty, uh -huh. two hundred fifty. How long does that translate? That's to? three minutes. 
about. Huh. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so as I said, so listen to this. I went to fucking Annecy. I went to Annecy Film Festival. I get the test in the mail right before I leave to Annecy Film Festival. And I'm staying in the hostel. I'm walking around the film festival. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm like, dude, I don't know why. Everyone looked like such a, I don't know what, a loser. Like, I was like, fuck all these people. They don't have, like, the vision of, like, getting that next big thing. I was like, fuck this festival. So I ran back in my room in the festival, and I did the festival in my room. You did the I test? I mean, I, sorry, I did the test in my room. And then um, uh, at the end, I put the chalk, I put the, I, I did paper and then China marker, like, and, like charcoal to, to shade it and China marker to do each panel and then I put them all over the room and I sprayed it with that fucking shit so the, the charcoal wouldn't spray uh, uh, smear uh -huh. and then I put them I put all the pages together I sent it to DreamWorks and then uh, they said I got the page the, the job you sent it from Annecy yeah and then but they said hey man your pages were stuck like a fucking 16 year old looking through a porno mag. Like, they were all like <laughs> sticky and shit, you know? And I didn't realize that that, that, that spray makes your pages stick together. Oh, so they had to like rip off each one. Who knows? Maybe that helped me get the draft too. Yeah, like, like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Wow. So you just knocked it out instead of hanging out around Annecy at the festival. Yeah. You went and did that. Yeah, I just knew that. Like, what was the vulnerable situation? Do you, do you remember? I remember I was like, these are a few things I remember from that test was just like, I was like, dude, I'm not going to call Pinocchio Pinocchio. I'm going to be fucking crazy. I'm going to call him Pinocchio. I bet no one's done that before. Pinocchio. Yeah, Pinocchio. Uh -huh. And I was like, yeah, Gingy and like all that shit. And I think as no, he did a lie. It was like, he did a lie and his fucking news, nose grew and uh -huh. snapped gingerbread in, in half with uh -huh. the fucking thing. And then gingerbread was like two halves. And he was like, and all that shit. Uh -huh. It's just like, yeah, yeah. That was it. I, I I kind of forget all the ins and outs. Of Do you that. did you keep that? Do you have that? No, they had it. They, they have. They probably still have it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, now you don't actually it. animate it. You just draw it. No, you just draw and it. submit it, and they call you and say you got the job. Yeah, because it was like two hundred fifty to three hundred panels. Wow. Yeah. So then you get hired on Shrek three. Yeah. By the way, dude. Before I like, I, there was a real lull there because after I got back from Annecy, I had unemployment for three months, and I was at a low. I was yeah. like four years of fucking cartoon school and right. I don't have a job. Just what your threats your threats were coming true. Yeah. And then I was like meeting my friends and they they all look like fucking hung over at assholes who haven't been drinking like right. either. But we just we all look terrible because none of us had work. And then um finally How were you job. surviving? At that point I lived at home. Oh. Yeah. But as soon as I got the job, I moved to the famous um apartments on Olive, uh, which have a weekly rent. What are those apartments called? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's like every... Over near uh, the farmer's market? Yes. Yeah. Every actor's lived I there. I almost moved there. <laughs> you're like, you're in there in bed and you're like, I might not have this room next week. Yeah. Week. <laughs> they they week were just... Week. Yeah. They were just testing you at, at DreamWorks in the beginning. They just kind of test you weekly to see... If, every week? Yeah. To see if you were you're good enough. Was it... Was, was it... You had to have been anxious. It was fucking terrible. So, but you were good enough. I was, but yeah. then like around the three year mark, I was like, "What the fuck am I doing?" Did that for here? three years? Yeah. How no, are no, those... no, I did it for five. How were those movies? They're terrible. They're terrible. Shrek three is so I bad. I like Shrek one. Shrek one's good. Uh -huh. Shrek two's pretty good. Uh -huh. Shrek three, fucking horrible. How's the animation? Doesn't matter. Justin Timberlake uh -huh. was King Arthur. <laughs> He, I mean, it's just, it's not far from a mannequin. Do you watch it back and you're like, fuck, do you see stuff I watched it back there? once and I thought, I spent two years on this. This fucking, that's shit. Uh -huh. And then I looked, I was like, okay, again, assess the situation. You're in your office. You see your boss and you see how miserable he is, right? Yeah. Then you see, okay, maybe I don't want to be him. Then you're like, maybe I want to be the art director. You see the art director. He's fucking snorting coke and doing whiskey in the closet. It's coming mm -hmm. back and like, hi, everybody. It's like super superficial, right? And then you're like, fuck, I don't want to be him either. And then you're like, maybe I want to be the head of story. Then you hear like the head of story, which the head of storyboards is, is like all he worries about is getting that directing job. And most of the time he won't get it, even though he's the head of story. So you're like, wow. The ratio, here, the assessment here, like results of of doing well, don't look good. Don't look fun. A lot like uh, coming out of school, like uh, a very small percentage of people in these things, yeah, go on to something better. Yeah, 
Yeah. So I learned several things in that in that situation there. What did you learn? I learned that you got to learn how to stop telling people more than they need to know, right? So I realized I'm going to stay to myself yet again. Like at CalArts, I got reprimanded for fucking talking too much. Yeah. At fucking, Cal, uh, I noticed at DreamWorks, I was telling too many people like, fuck that, I don't want that to be my future. Right. What's something cool? This whole time, I hadn't told myself, dude, a mile and a half down the road is Cartoon Network uh -huh. or Nickelodeon or Disney, and you can have a TV show and be happy as uh -huh. hell. And that's when I was just like, uh, I, 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 I thought, I'm here at the pinnacle. I'm at DreamWorks Animation. This is where I'm supposed to be, and I'm, I'm miserable. And it was around, that was the three years I was happy, then the fourth year I was like, this sucks. Do you go to the, to the movies and watch Shrek 3 at the yeah. theater? You did? Yeah. And I was just, I was so dis I was just sad. Did you go to the premiere? Yeah, I went to the premiere. Do you see your work up there on the screen? That's got to be gratifying. You see some? No, it isn't. Because no. Because it's like it's like sixty seconds worth of work out of a two-hour film. Wow. There's that many board artists and there's that many ideas thrown uh -huh. at it. These films are overworked. They're three out, uh, three years to make, a hundred sixty million dollar budget to make one of those. And Jeffrey Katzenberg, who at the time was like in charge of DreamWorks, he's not there anymore. But he was just like, no, you got to keep it at that high number because the high number. Uh, um, makes artists' expectations want to rise to that number. I'm sure there's a lot of other reasons why it's 160 million dollars. But he, people would come up to him and be like, "I can make this with 90 million." He'd be like, "Nope, we're sticking to 160." So he'd want to spend a shitload of money. Yeah, right? and they're overworked. Who? All these films. They're, 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 to this day, oh. they're overworked. So you're there for five years and you start to get itchy. Yeah, and I, I fucking you quit. I bounce. You quit DreamWorks. Yeah. Well, it was like mutual. It was like. Uh huh. I kind of. What do you mean, mutual? <laughs> they, they they knew they, uh -huh. I wasn't happy. Yeah, and, you demonstrated that, and yeah, they agreed. Yeah, yeah, and they pretty much said, "All right, here's your parting ways." And I was like, "Okay." So I collected unemployment for a year, and during that year, I thought, "Fuck animation! I'm going to be a fine artist," and that was the biggest mistake of my fucking career. You're saying you put yourself, you behaved in such a way that you wanted them to bounce you so that you could collect unemployment. Yeah. Because otherwise, you could have just quit, but you wouldn't have got unemployment, right? Right. Okay. So then... then um, What I, did you do? Do you remember? To yeah. fuck around. Oh, dude, to get him to hate me? I, yeah. I, I, I didn't have to do anything. It was just... <laughs> I wasn't into the work. It's, it, was, it was pain. Like I, I was very immature at the time oh. in picking up the pen to draw. I mean, they say no, no victory without suffering. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the case. I was I was suffering. You couldn't bring yourself to to do it. No, I you hated it. I I fucking hated it. Yeah, wow. I really did. And I I can't believe some of my friends are still there. I I, I I've I've done some freelance for them since. Yeah, and right away that feeling comes back of this just like it's it's a horrible feeling. It's it's like like a fucking. When one of those Jedi's says, "Oh, I feel a dark side close by," yeah, and he doesn't feel okay uh, like all the time. But sometimes he's like, "Oh, what's that in the air?" Obi Wan Kenobi's around. It fucking sucks, Matthew. You bail, or you get you get fired, so you get uh, unemployment, right? And you're doing fine art. What does that mean? So I just started painting, like for commissions or yeah. do people you have to tell people that hey i'm selling pictures How yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I like started getting in touch with galleries and stuff like that and then my friends were all trying to hit me up and like they're like oh Gigi's not working and i was like no no, no fuck that so i was just like i came up with another theory i was just like dude people take it personally mm -hmm. when they can't waste your time i was working all the time and like and like my friends started taking it personal that i wasn't hanging out with them because mm -hmm. they're like oh he's got free time and all that shit but i wasn't i was fucking working hard man i was trying to get fine arts to to be uh my life and then i realized that world is way worse than animation what were you like what were you doing like what were you i was just doing large canvases uh -huh. i was just like doing shit a lot of stuff like you see in my sketchbooks and shit like that yeah like so you've got four sketchbooks here yeah what are these you carry them around yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah all I brought him to this meeting just in case. Crazy shit that comes through? Yeah, because the number one theory, the uh -huh. one I live by the most, yeah. is go big but remain small. Uh huh. And just like, what does that mean? That means, like, here's my sketchbook, right? Right. It's, it's just like. Are these old? No, this is this one's brand new. We're looking at four somewhat yeah. worn. These are my four. Moleskins? These are the last, uh, these are from the last two years. Are they Moleskins? Yeah. And so. Um, Softback? How, how, what scale? About eight by five? Yeah. Yeah, about eight by five. And then I just, look, you just. It, oh, wow. Can I look at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy so, shit. Like here on the right, like, look, I'm a type A personality. Yeah. This is my daily schedule. This is what I had to do all day. 
you know? Okay. Every every page has a different date on them. Can sure. I read this? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Some of it you can't. No, yeah, no, no. okay. I'll just read it to myself. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> wow. The sketches you can read. Holy shit. Yeah. So is this the kind of stuff that you were doing? Like, yeah, I was like doing a, it like large. this on a giant. Yeah, but more like artsy fartsy and shit like that. This would be an incredible mural yeah, on the side of a building. Like, yeah, but not that clean. I do it yeah. a little more like, uh -huh. a little more fucked up, more more artsy. And I have fun doing those. So I was doing a bunch of fine arts, and wow. then boom, I found out these were shitty. And then I was like, okay. And then I went, Craig McCracken was hosting this. Um, uh, it wasn't a competition, but it was this. Uh, what did they call it? Cartoon Club or something like that. Like shorts? Yeah, where he was picking shorts that he wanted to see made at Cartoon oh. Network. And I went ahead. That, so this is the most recent one. Anyways, yeah, so like, uh, and then I went ahead and pitched him one and he liked it. Did you know him? <clears throat> you just tracked him down? No, I, I heard through the grapevine that they were doing this thing at Cartoon uh -huh. Network. So I just emailed Cartoon Network and said, hey, I'd like to pitch. And they're like, oh, f great. This is the final three weeks you can pitch. So if you can come in. When can you come in? I was like, put me on the last day of the third week. And they're like, okay, great. Is that what you did the last yeah, day of the third week? Pretty much, yeah. That's and a then, good strategy, right? Well, it was just, I needed the most last amount of call. time. Yeah. Right. So I went in there actually really confident. I don't know how I where I found that confidence from. I drank two beers in the parking lot before I pitched. Really? That's how nervous I was. Wow, I two beers that, in the parking lot. Yeah, that parking lot right next to us. Right really? Here, right there. No I, shit. I what, just went, what were they? Do you remember what they Coronas. were? Coronas. Two Cold Coronas? Two cold Coronas. Nice. I felt like... Did you feel like you were going to have beer in your breath? <laughs> Degenerate. I think I drank gum. I felt pretty bad. I was like, I need... My nerves. Were, yeah. I was so nervous. Why do you think you were so nervous? Because I was afraid of failure. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, um, I went in there, and I pitched three ideas. How did that go? It went great. He liked one. Did and, he like all of them? No. No. Did he like the first one, or the last one, or the middle one? He liked the first one. Oh. It was about a Russian girl. Do you put your best idea first? In that, sometimes I don't. But that, uh -huh. In that occasion, I did. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then the second one was about, fuck it. I remember the disgust. Dude, for all you people pitching TV shows and all that shit, if I could tell you, you've got to read people's faces. Yeah. And look at their faces. And as hard as it is to take that Craig McCracken wanted a fucking puke and jizz all over the second and third idea because he right. hated it so much. Those are adverse reactions to each other. I think. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, um, he didn't like them, but you just read their faces and yeah. that's it. I mean, hearing it is one thing, but just read the faces and just, and then take the, he said, I want you to redo this first one, bring it back next week and we'll see from there. So I redid, you got to take the notes well, man. Fucking listen to them. And then, um, I brought it back, and he said, all right, you get a development deal. And that was my first development deal. Wow. That was 2011. No shit. Yeah. And now going to pitch an animator is different probably than pitching execs. other execs. Was it? No, no. It's the same. Just sit down in his office and yeah, talk exactly. to your idea? What was your idea that he liked? It was like um, it was uh, these three kids. It was called Sticks and Bones. I have – fuck, I should have brought it. Um I, it was three kids on an island, and um, and they just had to pretty much survive on the island. And it was really, like, uh, kind of edgy, raw-looking. Mm -hmm. And um, it was great. It was, like, these these three kids. and, and, and uh, But they had real moments. You yeah. know? It, was, it wasn't just, like, oh, you know, wildness the whole time. It was, like, you, you heard I, – I was a big fan of Wonder Years when I was a kid. Yeah. And you heard them thinking to themselves serious shit. What was the one that he hated? The one there's uh there's two he hated. Uh -huh. <laughs> one was on uh it was I thought it was really cute. It was fucking it was a kids show and it was about like, you know, fucking diner a di a restaurant diner like fucking hot dog and fuck fucking salt and pepper shaker like all the stuff in a diner and then, like it's kind of like Toy Story. They all came to life. The idea is terrible. It was terrible. Like even pitching it right right uh -huh. now, I feel fucking. <laughs> I can hear how lame it was. And then um, the other one was just like straight up Viking idea, which it's weird, man. I can't explain to you this, Matthew, but a lot of people for some reason 
come up with the same ideas at the same time yeah. without even knowing each other. And he just says, if I see another Viking idea, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Uh, and it, like, I didn't know. I wasn't talking to anyone in the industry at the time. I just came up with the Viking idea because I thought that was fun and awesome and cool looking. Yeah. But like, um, people, they do this all the time in artwork. That's why it takes like a huge amount of focus and 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 like self discipline to be a band apart from everyone else. Yeah, you don't even know when you're doing it. You're just like when you come up with your own idea and it's so far from everyone else's. Uh -huh. It's the strangest thing. It's, it happens to this day. That's why it's just like wow, we're all gonna die. Like I I can see me coming up with new ideas until I'm 200 years old. Yeah. So you get a development deal and you feel like oh here's my lifeline. What did that turn into? Um. That, that made me realize, oh, shit, okay, so I was like, here's my lifeline, and then I was just like, uh, okay, um, I know this doesn't look like anyone else I'm, I'm fucking developing against, because there's like 27 other development deals out, out of like a thousand pitches, you know? Yeah. And so I was like, okay. And do you know what all those ideas are? From the other people? Yeah. You, you start poking around and yeah. becoming like a PI in the animation uh -huh. world, and like, <laughs> yeah, you find out. And, and there's like all kinds of other fucking pitches out there, so I, I do some snooping. And anyways, I thought, okay, this is it, JJ. This is the mindset you got to have. <laughs> normal is just an illusion. What is normal for the spider is chaos for the fly, right? Does that make sense? To me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sure. So I was just like, my normal is going to be so fucking different than everyone else's yeah. here. So that's what I did. I did this whole fucking show. I pitched that fucking, I came up with all this stuff. I showed it to Rob Sorcher. He's like, this is amazing. You know, I've never done this before, but JJ's like um, pitch packet was so good. If his storyboard's good, we'll go right to series. Wow. Yeah. And then I pitched the storyboard, show it to Sorcher, and Sorcher goes, sorry, this is a show we just greenlit. It's called Adventure Time, and they're, they're two alike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So I was like, <laughs> and I had to fucking start all over again, man. Holy shit. That fucking sucks. Yeah, it's a big hit. And that's when Mike Lazo said, um, hey, uh, he came in. And I remember I made Mike laugh. And I, I couldn't believe it. I fell yeah. off my chair because I don't know. Just He looks like a guy that's not easy to make uh, yeah. laugh. Yeah, kind of an intimidating presence. Yeah. So he liked you. Yeah, he did. He liked you, but he he wasn't gonna make the thing that that you pitched to Craig McCracken. No, no, he saw that. He yeah. saw the dude. He saw That's that. what made him like, mm -hmm. oh, this guy, this guy could be on Adult Swim. Yeah, and he's like, we want a sister show for Super Joe, which just came out. Right. And then he's like, you got any ideas? And I was like, how about this? How about all the mascots in a fucking um, Disneyland? Like fucking, there's different gangs of mascots, and they fight each other, and it all takes place in a Disneyland. He's like, love it. What do you call it? And I was like, <laughs> I, call it, I call it Happy Land. And he's like, straight to the top, kid. Let's go. That's what he said? Yeah. No, Come he on. didn't say that. He said, all right, I'll give you a deal. So he gave me a deal right there on the spot. What do you think he meant by a sister show to Super Joe? He wanted something because Super Joe was doing really well mm -hmm. at the time. And they were in their first, like, right? I think they just finished the first season. And he really, he really liked it. And um, a sister show, I was like, okay, see, there's another situation where you really got to dissect, like, what does he mean? What does an exec mean when they say something, mm -hmm. right? And so that's when I was like, oh, I wonder what he means. And then I was like, oh, it's a jail cell, right? There's like a bunch of violence going on. There's gangs of people. There's a lot of different characters. There's the warden. So I was like, oh, it's like the same, a similar type of show he wanted. Yeah, gangs of violent rogues. Something, yeah. And it could have mm -hmm. been anything. I mean, it, Right now, I just thought of one, like, what if it was, like, a cor like a four corners of a street and each one was a fucking f uh, fast food restaurant and they're all going, they're all, like, fighting yeah. against each other and all that. So he gives you a deal. He gives me a deal. He says, you got a deal. You got a deal, kid. Wow. Gives it to me. I'm like, fuck yeah. And I was, like, so naive. I was uh -huh. just like, sign it. I didn't even, like, uh -huh. counter. I just signed it. Uh -huh. And uh, He doesn't give you a deal right there. He, no, no. Somebody just, calls it takes, you. A, it takes right. like, two weeks yeah. to get the deal. So okay. I got the deal. And then um, you sign it. I sign it. He comes. He's like, "Oh, this is great." We we uh, he comes back for another meeting here, and I show him my artwork. Mm -hmm. and he's like, "Okay, awesome, love it, love where this is going." And I was like, "Oh, so like I I'm skittering out of the office, right?" I'm like, "Oh, hey, Mike, here's this." And he's like, "What is it?" I'm like, "It's a zine of my sketchbook, one of these." Oh, so I left. Mike Lazo calls the next day. 
He goes, cancel Happy Land. I want JJ to base a show on this drawing in his sketchbook. Wow. And then I'm like, what drawing was it? <laughs> what drawing was it? This picture was of the the font, Snow White and Disneyland font. Uh -huh. And Disney font, not Disneyland font, two different fonts. And uh, this guy with a crown and, and, a, and a mullet. Yeah. And then it was this fucking Volt, like a, a, a Voltron cat with a bunny rabbit riding it. And that's what the sketchbook page was. It was wow. random shit. Just something that you had uh, been noodling on? Yeah. And then. Why did you give it to him? Because I was I was giving my zine out to everyone. Oh, so it was a it wasn't one of these books that I'm no, looking at here. It no. was a printed it was a printed zine. Oh, okay. I made two hundred copies. Wow. Yeah, and I just gave one. Yeah. Are those available? Can you? Yeah, can people can buy them. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I, they're all they're all gone, but I have some left. Wow. Yeah. So like. Uh, so he saw that picture, freaked out. Saw, yeah. He's changed like, the course of your like, life. What do you call it? Uh huh. He's like, call it King Star King, and he's like, let's make it a show. Straight to the top, kid. Wow. Straight to the top. That's exciting. And then that was it. And then, like, I, I did a storyboard. Mm -hmm. They hooked me up with this guy named Eric Kaplan. Uh, mm. uh, he's, like, the head writer for Big Bang Theory. Yeah. And then... Uh, Why do you get hooked up with a writer? Because, like, writing is the most important thing in all fucking TV. Yeah. Like, without a doubt. I'm not even going to lie. And I'm the fucking artist of all artists. Yeah. It's the number one most important thing. If you more don't important good, than the art. More important than the art. So, we... Uh, dude, this is all brand new to me. So... Mike Lazo was confident in me, but not 100% confident. He's like, all right, JJ, you got to animate 60 seconds worth of, uh, of shit, right? So, uh, of King Star King storyboards. So. Why? He, because he wanted to be, he didn't want to spend all the money on uh, 11 minutes and 30s, a uh, 12 minute uh, pilot. Yeah. So rather than that, he was smart. He's like, how about I just use a little bit of money and see if JJ can hang and bang and we'll just do 60 seconds. Right. So I did 60 seconds of King Star King, sent it to him. He said, this fucking sucks. Sent it back. He's like, you got one more chance. Wow. And I was like, oh, shit, what am I going to do? So I sat in my office. Why did it like, suck? It was, it was terrible animation. It, I, wasn't, I, I, I wasn't being smart with uh, my own show. I was like, kind of like whatever they sent back to me, I, was, I approved. Because I was scared to give notes and uh -huh. shit like that. You know, I was like 34 at this yeah. time. Yeah. And then like... 33, I think, 33. And uh, I was just, I, I, I didn't know what being a creator was, like what, how you really got to do, honestly, put out your two middle fingers, like you're holding guns, like uh -huh. Jesus, right? And you got to spin around. 360 fuck yous to everyone. You got to make this the best you can for you. And these moments come to you because sleep is the best meditation. You got to sleep and you got to fucking think about this shit. And you got to go, okay, how am I going to make this good for Mike? He's giving me one more shot. So you didn't, you sent it in. He didn't like it. Yeah, he didn't like it. He's like, I'm going to give you one more shot. And what'd you do differently? So this time I was just like, what's the best animated show? I, 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 for, for me, I, at the time, I was like, Super yeah. Chill is the best animated show. It's fucking, it's on ones. Ones meaning one um, frame. Uh, so there's 21 frames a second. 21 frame, just 21 drawings for one second of uh -huh. animation. Some people do twos where they do 12, sec 12 drawings for one second of animation, right? So I was like, Super Gels on ones. They fucking go for it. It's edgy. It's nice. Who's the art? Who's the animation director for Super Gel? This guy named Mike Carlo. So I fucking hit up Mike Carlo. I'm like, I need you to do a freelance job. I know you're busy, but can you do it? And he's like, yeah, sure. And um, he went ahead and did the, the 60, next 60 seconds. And Mike Lazo saw it and was like, straight to the top. That's <laughs> he liked it. Straight you were nervous sending it in, probably. Yeah. He liked it. Yeah. Said, okay, you yeah. have a series. Yeah, no, he said you have a pilot. You have a pilot. And oh, we did the fuck. pilot. You <laughs> do a no. pilot. You did the pilot. <laughs> yeah, man. It's fucking hard, man. Yeah. Look, can I tell you something? Like, and you're not getting paid a ton of money to do these steps. You're living on Taco Bell meat, man. Yeah. Taco Bell meat. Not even the show. You don't even have PBR. You know what you have? You go to a bar. And you know those guys that leave their cans at the bar after yeah. they're done? You're drinking the last sip of every fucking beer. Yeah. It's like all kinds of people's saliva Get in your the mouth. DNA, yeah. Yeah, you got fucking hepatitis, yeah. fucking gonorrhea all over your lips. Wow. You're fucking drinking shit. So then you got to do a pilot. Got to do a pilot. You got to jump through another hoop. Yep. And then all kinds of new drama came up with whatever. So fucking uh, did the pilot. Uh-huh. Yeah.
There's, there's, there's so much drama into getting uh-huh. a TV show. I asked Mike once, I said, how hard is it to get a TV show? And he said, practically impossible. And that's it. And that's the God honest truth for anyone trying to get a fucking TV show. It's so hard. You have to make so many sacrifices. You have to live by yourself in your own mind. A wise man once said, nothing. You don't speak to people. You're just in your own fucking head. And one other thing I can recommend out there. Try to create your show by yourself. Don't be a co-creator. 99% of the time, it doesn't work out. And there's hundreds of examples of that. A lot of people say it's nice to have another person to bounce bounce uh, ideas off of. Good cop, bad cop. You can have that, but it doesn't have to be a co-creator. It could be a, a producer. So because of legal issues and exactly. contracts and stuff like that, the co-creator fucks things up? Yeah, co-creator, you, you guys will most likely hate each other. And you were friends before. So you make six episodes of Kingstar King. Seven. Seven. Oh, six plus the pilot? Mm-hmm. Was it satisfying? It won Adult Swim's first animated Emmy. For character design? Yeah. That's unbelievable. I know. You got the first Emmy for the network. For animation. Robot Chicken won, but that was like stop motion. Right. That's not traditional animation. Wow. Yeah. And then they canceled it. They canceled it? Yeah. After the Emmy? Before the Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you go to the Emmys. I go to the Emmys. Uh-huh. I fucking grab that Emmy by the balls. Yeah. And I still remember my speech. I like to think my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my family, Adult Swim, Titmouse, everybody had a Kingstar King team. Yeah! <laughs> that was it? Yeah. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah. You can see it. Why did they Instagram. cancel it? Because they said it was too sexual. And um, it was too edgy. Too edgy. Yeah. And then they said, we're not even going to put it on air. They launched it as its first digital uh, internet show. And then the- What rate, year was this? This was 2014, 15? 15. Wow. Does it feel that way now? No. I mean- It's, be- it's before its time. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Too sexual and too edgy? Yep, and then the the ratings were great on the internet, so they're like, like, they didn't tell me at Adult Swim, and they're Uh like, all right, we're going to put it on air, but don't tell JJ, we're going to put it on at 4 Uh a.m., when all the cokeheads are still awake, right? doing smack, (laughs) getting blow, getting blow jobs, fucking doing all their nasty shit, and the cokeheads loved it, man. Your show comes on. My show comes on. And it does well at 4 a.m.? did well. It did pretty good at 4 a.m., yeah, and then right after my show finished... It was just like, hey, welcome to Steven's Universe. <laughs> it's like the show right after mine was a Cartoon Network show. Kids. Holy shit. Yeah. So that you were the lead in to Steven Universe. Mm-hmm. Wow. So King Star King ends. Mm-hmm. Are you pissed that they cancel it? I was just like. After you know, all the work that you I was like Kobe Bryant, man. I left it all on the court. I yeah. didn't have anything to complain about. I was yeah. just like, I was just more like, they didn't like it. They didn't like it. I'm, I'm not one to hold grudges. Yeah. I, don't, I don't hold grudges. So what do you it's, do? This, so you just go, fuck, back to the drawing board. You, so I started pitching. Did they pitching. say, pitch me something else? Oh, yeah. Adult Swim did. And I was pitching all around town, kids' shows. And then you see, at the time, like, you know, Adult Swim had a huge monopoly on uh, adult content cartoons. Yeah. And, um, it's crazy what how much that can change in five years. You know? Yeah, now it's like different so, now. So many places. I mean, five fucking years, man. That's not a lot of time. And, like, it's just so much different now. But, uh, yeah, so, like, I pitched them a show. You want to hear it? Yeah. It's a quick pitch. I was, like, I was working out at the L.A. Uh, fitness across from the, the La Brea Tar Pit. It doesn't sound like, <laughs> I don't know you well, but it doesn't sound like something that you'd be doing. I know. I love going to the gym. It's like, it's therapeutic. It really is the uh-huh. best method yeah. of fucking therapy. I, I tried all kinds of medication, but the gym is the best. Uh-huh. No drugs in this body, man. No? I piss clean. No? No, no. drugs? No. Man. Alcohol? Alcohol, yeah. What do you do? You do the elliptical? Um, I love the, tre- well, yeah. Which one's the elliptical? The one with the arms? No, 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 no. I just do just the treadmill. Uh-huh. Treadmill and all the other shit around the gym. Okay. So I'm looking at LACMA. It's right across the street. I'm like, whoa, wouldn't that be crazy if some fucking dinosaurs came out of that tar pit? Mm-hmm. And I was like, that'd be sick. And I was like, whoa, what if there's dinosaurs transformed into, we had four of them. 
one ch changed into a bag of coke another one changed in a stack of cash another one changed into a gun and another one changed into a used contraceptive right i was like i'm pitching this to mike lazo and he said straight to the top kid i love it let's make a show really yeah so i fucking developed the show it was called <laughs> i think it was just called uh caligula caligula yeah I think that what? was that was the name of the main dinosaur, the chance for it. Do you, do you make it? So uh, for a year we developed it, and at the end of the year he's like, "I don't like it. You need a writer." Because I was trying to write this on my own. Uh huh. And he's like, "JJ, you're a terrible writer. Straight up, Mike Lazo doesn't beat around the bush. He fucking straight and narrow. Uh huh. Doesn't have time for that." So I go, "Okay." So we hire a writer, and he's like, "Let's change it." Do you pick the writer? No, Adult Swim did. Oh. They picked my last couple writers, so I let them do it. That was a big mistake. I should have picked my own writer. Huh. So they put a writer on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it changed into a chase cartoon. So now I had these two fucking dinosaurs chasing each uh -huh. other. And then um, we did the animatic. Mike's like, I love it. Let's send an animation. So you get two weeks to prepare to send an animation. Uh -huh. You know, there's a lot of process before you go from an animatic, which is a... Uh, for all you guys out there that don't know what an animatic is, it's fucking storyboards um, made into a quick time with timing and voices and a little sound effects. And it's pretty close to the animation. And then um, the literally the day before we said <laughs> animation, Mike calls up and goes, I don't like it. Start over. Oh, no. <laughs> so we had to create a new show. That hurts. There's a lot of butt hurt in this. There's a lot of crying in showers uh -huh. when you're working uh -huh. in this industry, dude. Holy shit. By the way, I'm just talking about Mike and, and Adult Swim yeah. this whole time. I'm pitching to other places, yeah. and I have other development deals. So This I'm is just, one portion of your this is the adult. We're, we're, this is the Adult Swim podcast. That's right. I'm just doing Adult Swim That's shit. right. Okay. So, we can only imagine what else is going on. Yeah, there's other shit going yeah, on. Yeah, so this is all in the morning, yeah. in the afternoon. You can't just survive off of one development deal. No. You've got That's to, an important thing, I think, that people yeah. uh, might not know. It sounds glamorous to have a development deal, but it's... Oh, dude! It's like that's a... like that's like having a pimp walk up to you at the Greyhound station when you're fresh off the bus from Arkansas, going, "You're gonna be an Oscar winner. Just follow me." Uh -huh. It's like great. Here's one pimp. <laughs> yeah. you gotta have a couple more pimps you asking pimps. for you too. You know, <laughs> get as much money as you can from many pimps. Because you never know which one of these things is gonna disappear. Know. You yeah. might get a call. And then you don't want to be away. you don't want to be known as that asshole who has development deals all around town and they can't cannot get anything made. Oh, that's a that's 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 a, even a worse reputation. Why is that? Get, because if you're that dude that can't exactly fucking get it done, uh huh, get the show on air. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. Second place is first to lose, dude. That's that's like that's not good. So you're out, you're pitching, you're hustling. Yeah. And then, and then he goes, "You got to do it. You got to. I don't like this. Do another one." So another idea, another idea. So we blended all those ideas kind of together, and we mm -hmm. came up with this pilot called Trapped Universe, um, and that's the one we made. You can look it on YouTube, uh -huh. and if you watch it carefully, yeah, you can see it is about four different ideas in one. Uh -huh. <laughs> but only me and the people in development here at Adult Swim kind of saw that. Uh huh. Yeah. So that that didn't go. That didn't go. Uh huh. Yeah. But do you read the comments on YouTube about it? Yeah. They liked it. They like it. Yeah. Because at the time, when it finished, it was coincidentally a bunch of other Adult Swim pilots finished, and they, they, they said, they posted them all at the same time. It was like six different ones. Mm -hmm. And if you look at that post, wherever that is, I'm not boasting because I created it, but just like there, most people were talking about Trap Universe. Mm -hmm. But Can you take any of these shows and put them somewhere else? Yeah, you have to wait a year usually. Yeah. Yeah. And then other studios can buy it. So Trap Universe comes and goes. Comes and goes. And then that, and this is, and then, uh, um, and then Mike Lazo goes back in his memory bank and he remembers Snow White mm -hmm. and the way I drew it. And he goes, I want JJ to base a cartoon off of Snow White fairy tales. Wow. So this is based on that drawing? Jack. Yeah. No shit. Uh -huh. That's why you carry these books. Uh -huh. No, no. That's not why I carry. Uh -huh. I, mean, I don't carry these books. I carry these books because I fucking love drawing. Yeah. Yeah. Why I, do you have four books and not just one book? No, because I, I brought this up to show you. Oh, oh. I thought share, you carried Matthew. them all. I thought you carried them all around. What do you think? So I he, some asshole? Matthew, so he, what the fuck? So he calls you and he says, JJ, I want you to do a Snow White cartoon. Yeah. And you're like, of course. 
And I or looked in the like, mirror. Fuck that. I looked in the mirror and I said, "Confidence is not. They will like me. Confidence is. I'll be fine if they don't." How about that? Because it's kind of full circle yeah. coming back to DreamWorks. It, it is. And DreamWorks can't like this idea, right? Oh hell no, 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 no. Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, uh, not the way I would have done the fairy tales. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so then he said, "All right, do a storyboard." So I fucking did a storyboard, right? Yeah. And I said to myself, dude, Adult Swim knows me by now, right? They know I fucking kick ass. They know I can kick ass animation if I needed to, you know? It's like, they call on LeBron James or Michael Jordan to shoot the last shot. Mm. They know they can rely on me, JJV. So I said to myself, again, this is like me in bed, Uh right? With a a limp dick looking at the ceiling Uh and going, what can I do to make this work go faster? So your mind's always wondering, you know, like like trying to get your career further. Is it you? Is it someone else? Yeah, yeah. What's causing my Yeah, angst? yeah. So I said, okay, okay. By the way, with that quote I just said, you got to imagine. How many beds are in L.A.? And how many beds in L.A. are filled with like animation people trying to make it in this industry? How many of those people are trying to get ahead by fucking... M- Manaling or whatever that word is, and, and fucking scheming and doing and doing shit. Like and we're all thinking how to get ahead. There's a million people in bed looking at the ceiling, right? Thinking, thinking the same thing. How the fuck am I going to get uh-huh. ahead, right? I have integrity, right? I'm a nice guy. I'm I'm fucking I'm a good person, right? But you know, some of these animated fucking people, they're fucking assholes and they're pieces of shit. So they're rats. They're ratty rat world, man. And, uh, but I'm not. So I'm like, I, I do everything on the up and up. I have a reputation, a good reputation, yeah. a clean one. Yeah. I'm fucking, sh- 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 uh-huh. sh- my reputation's good. So I was like, okay, this is what you can do, JJ. To prove how fucking good this fairy, uh, this fairy tale uh, cartoon can be, um, you're going to do double the amount of storyboards that you usually do so we can skip the fucking three months of animation and, and see if we can go from animatic to series. series. That's what right. I did. I did fucking like almost 2,000 storyboards for this fucking uh, first episode of wow. Goldilocks. And I, I, I overboarded it on purpose. To be like, dude, look, it's practically moving. All you have to do is like it. All you have to do is like it. Look, Walter, Mike, there it is. Uh-huh. Like this, we can go right to series. And then they did. And we went right to series. Wow. Yeah. Writer? Oh, uh, I hired my friend. My friends. You see, this is the first time I hired my friends. And it was Johnny Ryan. And uh, he's a comic book guy. Yeah. And then James Merrill, who wrote, wrote the episode of King Starkey and that won the Emmy. Oh, shit. Yeah. Did it piss you off when he said, you're not a good writer? No. He was, he was, he was honest. I'm not a good writer. He was honest, but do you agree with him? Yes. I'm a terrible <laughs> writer. I fucking suck, man. I've spent all this time like uh, practicing how to draw and animate uh-huh. and storyboard. Like I haven't been writing. I'm not a good writer. So they, so you, I get, guys, I'm getting better. So Johnny Ryan and James Merrill. James Merrill are my writers. For they Fantas. write. They did they write all these episodes? Yeah, yeah. We we wrote them all together. We 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 just spent one summer, three months, and we wrote seven six episodes. Explain the show to the listener if they haven't seen it. So fairy tales is just like. Um, it's a darker look into what the fairy tales are, and we just aim to make it as funny as we could, and they're really funny. I like them all. How much did you use uh, the Grimm's fairy tales? Okay, that was a major note. We had l- at least keep a third to a half of what the Grimm's was originally. How do you measure such a thing? You got to like always have that in the back of mind. You always, the story beats of the in the writer's meeting. You always got to go. Whoa, 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 whoa! We can't have Snow White. Jumping out of a fucking airplane with a bazooka. It's mm-hmm. fucking gone too far, uh-huh. okay? Let's ground the shit a little. Uh-huh. And that's it. You, you just got to always do that. And no sex jokes. No sex jokes. Uh-huh. Watch to that. To keep it away from There's King There's not Star one K. fucking... No- and I did that to also prove, like, hey, I don't need sex jokes to make a good cartoon. Uh-huh. And that's what I did. That was a note. It was... It was the, them, they're like, hey, you know, just be careful with it. With me, uh-huh. I was like, fuck them. We don't need them. Cartoon Networks, Ren and Stimpy didn't have them. We don't need them. Right. So... That was a note from the network. Mm-hmm. Keep the original beats from the Brothers Grimm. Yeah, yeah. Just just don't get too far. For... Tell the people what stories to expect. Oh, we did Goldilocks, Rapunzel, um, Rumpel, uh, Snow White, Little Red Riding Hood, and Pinocchio. Everybody knows the story, so you sort of have a built-in yeah. knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are fun, man. Yeah. The stoners are going to like them. <laughs> 
What do you mean? I mean, they're just like, they're, they're like really them. clean, uh -huh. good, funny, humor stories. And like, I would watch, want to watch them if I was high. I'd be like, oh, this is fucking funny, man. What do you like that, that's out there now? I mean, you're making your I like own Apple shit. and Onion. Yeah. I love South Park. I love... Adventure Time. <laughs> what? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Let's cut that part out. You told me. Psych! Do you watch Adult Swim? Do you watch the yeah. network? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. You feel like you have to to under, understand you how, gotta, to, how to steer the show? You always got to keep up on what's going on with yeah. Adult Swim. Adult Swim has some very edgy shit. Oh, there's that guy I love on Adult Swim that does a lot of... Uh, 15 second um, commercials. He does them in 3D. He's from France. He doesn't really give out his name. He's just known as like fantastic 3D animation. That's what he goes by. Is it Jameer at yes. home? Yes. Fucking love that dude. I love that guy. Uh, Luvenaz. So good. Yeah. Ballmasters. Love Ballmasters. Love Mr. Pickles. The great Christy Caracas. Yeah. Mr. Pickles. Love the spinoff of Mr. Pickles. Uh -huh. Mama called me Sheriff. Love Eric Andre. There's some good shit out there, man. Dude, don't forget, those late night voices are good. It's interesting to me that uh, that, that uh, King Star King was flagged for being too edgy, but now it doesn't seem like it would be. Has the bar changed? The bar has fucking changed. Edgy always changes, you know? I'm not like Trey and Matt with a million, millions of dollars in my bank account. The poles are not in my car to fucking drive off and leave Hollywood behind, you know? I'm in this shit. I'm in the fucking trenches. Yeah. I'm still trying to fucking balance me too with what 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 how to make transgenders okay in cartoons. You know, we had a whole pitch on Pinocchio mm -hmm. on how we wanted it to be. I want to be a real woman. Like that's all the I want to be a real woman. Uh -huh. I want to be a real woman. We we're balancing that all out. Or should we just do a problem child Pinocchio? So like tune in, you'll see um, which one we picked. But either way, you know, there's so many things you got to just balance out now when yeah. you're in the writer's room. You got to sort it out there. And it helps to have, I guess, writers that you like, that they're your friends. You can negotiate some of that stuff more it easily. It does have that. That's a big step forward because you don't have to build up a friendship to, to know what this guy in front of me likes and doesn't like. Yeah. What music do you listen to? Uh, right now, I, I just bought. Uh, okay, you're going to love this. Um, ACDC, right? Classic. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. Right. That's right? like your theme song. But if you want to <laughs> really make that, if you're, listen, people, if you want to fucking be in this, if you want some, like, you know how uh, the Night Stalker used to drive around, listen to um, Hell's Bells in his car before that. he went and killed people, no. right? You listen to fuck, if you want to get a TV show, listen to this. It's a long way to the top. But instead of saying, if you want to rock and roll, you got to yell out in your car if you want a TV show. It's a long way to the top if you want a TV show. What's it about uh, Bukowski that you respond to? Charles Bukowski? Yeah. Don't try. What do you mean? That's what he has on his tombstone. Yeah, don't try? If, if you're trying. Well, what's that's completely the opposite of what the music you were just playing. That's not at all. It's the same, <laughs> dude. It's all the same. Listen, don't try or do don't try? Don't try. If 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 you, it's a long way to the top, if you want a TV show, dude, uh -huh. it's the same thing. Look, if you're a long, it's a long way to the top. If you want a TV show, you just gotta fuck it. Let it happen, man. Don't try. Let it happen. Don't try. Don't try. Just but let hustle. it be. Let it be what it is. Don't try. There's a difference. Trying was when I was back in DreamWorks. Yeah. I was trying to make something happen that uh -huh. was just not gonna happen. There, here, it's like don't try. I'm not really. I'm just doing all this uh -huh. shit. Doing what comes naturally to you. Yeah, and it's I, I could feel my nerves like they're cool. They're like, all right, this is what happens in this industry. But when you're drawing Shrek in and out all day, my uh -huh. nerves are like, what the uh -huh. fuck are you doing? Your body was That's repelling That's trying. It, it is. And my hands started clamming up, and I had problems drawing. I started like. For real? Yeah, I started like being like that and shit. <laughs> Remember when Trump did that thing? And he's like. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like That's that. when you draw Shrek. Yeah. All right, J.J. Villard. There you have it, J.J. Villard, recorded in Burbank just a couple weeks back. What do you think, Max? Well, Matt, what's your favorite fairy tale of all time? I like Rumpelstiltskin, the idea of spinning uh, straw into gold. Yeah. That's, you know, the Adult Swim streams, really. Straw into different straw, at least. Uh, do you like the idea of having to guess a small, strange man's name? Is that what you like to do? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't really remember the fairy tale. You don't remember the, the the whole thing is that uh, uh, for some reason 
in order to get money, this woman goes to the goblinish man named Rumpelstiltskin, and she he gives her the power to weave gold, but she promises her first child to him, and she can only get the child back if he she guesses his name. So she has to trick him to find out his name is Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah, not one that you would immediately guess. One of my favorite is actually the fable by Jean de La Fontaine called The Ass and His Masters. <laughs> I don't know what it's about, <laughs> but I love it. Is that a real one? Yeah. The Ass and His Masters? Wow. No, no, it's uh, It's been around since Greek classical times. It's been in Aesop's fables. It's been in a lot of things. Uh, there's a donkey in the employ of a gardener who oh. complains to the king of the gods that he's not getting enough food, so he wants a new owner. He's given to this potter, and he's like, oh, no, this is too heavy, too many pots. And then and he's given to a tanner, and he's like, oh, man, no, I missed my first guy. And uh, uh, it was uh, a weird fable about how slaves were often not happy. And it's very weird. Sounds weird. What did you think of JJ? I thought there was a crazy manic energy. I think it's, I think he, oddly enough, it feels like, uh, the interview that's most relatable to young animators. He offered uh, advice. And just it's just about going to school and a, a, a long career and many different paths, working on children's shows. Seems like he uh, has a pretty good work ethic. He works real hard. I really enjoy the idea of like demystifying film festivals. But yeah. he, though he had kind of like a mocking attitude for it, I like to think like, oh, People, go out and get your shit there in film festivals. I think when I was in college, I mean, I don't think I made anything good until I was 25, but I think I would have been terrified to put anything in any film festival because there's like this lofty expectation of quality when everyone's a work in progress. We're all making things, and each opportunity leads to another. Why not just put your fucking thing in a film festival and try and get exposure that way? Because what he's saying is that some of these seem like sort of a racket to get to play to people's egos, and they don't really have any effect on your career. And, and oh. almost the Oxnard one almost derailed his entry into camp. But he said they should still do it, right? Still do it. So I don't know what to think. <laughs> I'm left not knowing. Hey, um, Snake Jazz, that song from Rick and Morty. Yeah, what about it? It's available digitally now. The song is featured in Rattlestar Rick Lactica, season four of Rick and Morty, written by the show composer Ryan Elder who was on this podcast. The episode uh, is going to replay this Sunday, April 19th, on the network. Snake Jazz will be available digitally this Friday the 17th. You want to buy it? It's on Spotify. It's at the iTunes store, and we'll have a link for you with all of our other links. Visit AdultSwim.com or download the Adult Swim app to watch not only J.J. Villard's fairy tales, but some of the things we were all just talking about. It's free for Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, Android, iOS, you can also watch our live streams like Blood Feast. And be a patron of the Oxnard Film Festival. Last stream on the left, Truth Point. As seen on Adult Swim, of course, Fish Center. That's O-X as in the Ox and Nard. Watch J.J. Villard's Fairy Tales premiering Sunday, May 10th on Adult Swim. Music from today's episode is from our pal Dom. His song, Living in America. Thanks to Dave Bonowitz and Christina Loringer for putting this podcast together. Send your comments, requests, whatever, adultsmanpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week. 